<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to What You Need to Know. I am Sybil Wilkes, and I am so, so very happy to have these wonderful and distinguished women uh, here with me today. And we are uh, here with members of the Sisters United for Reform, our panel discussion on the power of the sisterhood. This is going to be a wonderful evening, and I hope that you will enjoy the time that we have here. Uh, and if you have any questions you'd like to uh, be a part of this, uh, we encourage your messaging us and uh, getting you on board with us as we have just a wonderful, as I said, uh, discussion this evening and uh, show the real power of the sisterhood. Let us start and uh, introduce our guest here. And um, let us start with uh, Margaret Gaines Clark of the Girlfriends, the 30, 37th National President of the Girlfriends and reelected to a second term in May of this year. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, also we have the Girlfriends Incorporated is one of the oldest and most highly respected social organizations of African-American women in this country, founded in 1927 in Harlem, USA, during the Harlem Renaissance, a small group of young women who were close friends, wanted to stay in touch as they went away to college and entered adulthood. And here we are in 2020 and has grown to encompass over 1,800 women in 47 chapters, coast to coast. Let us say good afternoon and good evening to Dr. Glenda Glover, our friend and president of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated, international president, as well as president of her very own alma mater. How great is that? Tennessee State University. And uh, as a part of uh, the Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority, an international service organization founded on the campus of Howard University. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Uh, <laughs> part of that organization, the oldest Greek letter organization established by African American college educated women dedicated to raising the status of African Americans. And so we say thank you for joining us, uh, President Clover. Next up, we have Guinevere Catchings Hess of the Black Women's Agenda, um, became president during the Obama administration, and she leads this organization with the 23 national collaborating organizations to collectively heighten the awareness of the disparity among African-American women. Uh, during her tenure, she has championed many a cause, including voting rights, affordable health care, violence against women act, and getting out the vote. The Black Women's Agenda is devoted to advancing, securing, and protecting the rights of women. Dr. Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, the 17th National President of the Lynx Incorporated and the Lynx Foundation, also the President and CEO of Envision Consulting, LLC. The Lynx founded in 1946 in Philadelphia by Margaret Roselle Hawkins and Sarah Strickland Scott on the tenets of friendship and service. Welcome, Dr. Jeffries Leonard. And uh, lastly, we say hello to our friend, Beverly Evans Smith, president, national president and CEO for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, also serving as the organization's national first vice president, national secretary, and previously employed as Delta Sigma Theta's executive director. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. hello. And welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ladies, we are here to talk about the power of sisterhood. Um, and, and can we talk a little bit and give a little background uh, to Sisters United for Reform? And uh, let's start with you, Dr. Glover. Thank you, Sister Sybil. Uh, before we start, I want to take a moment and thank Sybil and Yolanda for the work you all are doing. You two are outstanding. Sybil, you have spent your life uplifting and promoting Black women, so we certainly appreciate that. And we encourage everyone to continue to tune in and subscribe as we continue to promote uh, African Americans. Well, thank you all for joining with us this evening. I am Glenda Glover. I serve as International President and CEO of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And I extend greetings on behalf of Sisters United for Reform to all who are with us tonight. Well, in late May of this year, Several of us came together as leaders of African-American women organizations to issue the strongest condemnation of the horrific, unspeakable, unjustified killings of black women, black men, black girls, black boys, 
and that just sparked a global movement for racial justice. We joined in that movement. So 13 women organizations came together with a vision and established an agenda for action. So tonight you'll hear from uh, these African-American leaders that represent more than 5 million collective voices. You'll hear from five of us as we exert our collective might to ask and encourage, even persuade this community to vote and prepare a voting plan because your life, your liberty, your liberation, your latitude, your leeway, even your luxuries depend on this vote. That's, that's, a power, <laughs> that's powerful. That's yeah. powerful. And it is something as, um, as we are now going through um, the early voting stages and, and a lot of folks have been in line uh, and where I am in, in Texas today, um, it's just been uh, a message that apparently is getting through to people as we saw lines of people uh, starting well before the polls opened this morning as the sun mm -hmm. was rising uh, mm -hmm. and folks out there voting as if their lives depend upon it. And so um, we are uh, encouraged by that site, but also encouraged by the work that you all have done. Uh, and especially uh, in terms of this open letter that you sent to uh, the vice presidential candidate, Kamala Harris on Friday. Uh, and, can, and can we talk about uh, the letter, uh, what it means to you all and the purpose? Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak to that? I can speak to that, Sybil. I'm so uh, so proud to be able to have a part of this um, this organiz uh, this this collective power of these women. One of the things that we wanted to do as a collective, as a coalition, Sisters United for Reform, we wanted to show the strength of the five million women that Sister Glover talked about. Mm -hmm. We knew that when our sister Kamala made history. That was really an important step for Black women. Uh, it was the first time we've ever seen anything like this. And so we wrote a letter congratulating her and expressing our uh, pure joy that we had mm. this sister here in this space, in this historic time. We also knew that as a Black woman, as any strong Black woman comes out, there were going to be people who came out against her in mm -hmm. terms of uh, verbal abuse and, and, and just questioning her ability, questioning her, uh, the, even why she's there. And so mm -hmm. as, a, as a coalition, Sisters United for Reform decided that we would wait and see um, what happened. And, and certainly after the uh, vice presidential debate, we realized it was time for our 5 million voices mm -hmm. to be heard to say that we will not allow anyone to say these things about this Black woman, our sister, and bring her down in this way. And we wanted people to know we have her back. And awesome. that's why we put this letter out. And a powerful, a powerful vote uh, and, and, and backing of, of of powerful women, five million voices strong in terms of the support that you have, have lent to her as well, or not lent, but are you're giving to her uh, as she stands strong in the midst of this storm, uh, and especially in, in the uh, slings and arrows that have, uh, that have come her way as a result of her being on this ticket and, and in this historic space. Um, ladies, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the actions of the of the coalition uh, and and what you all are doing as Sisters United for Reform, and um, let me ask you that, um, Ms. Hess, uh, Guinevere Catchings Hess, about what uh, Sisters United for Reform is doing. Well, we've been busy considering <laughs> that we uh, just got started, but we're typical black women. I one of the things that happened, I think that sort of we coalesced around, especially was after the murder of uh, George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And there was this, when he cried out for his mother, we saw that as a cry out to black women yes. and that we needed to get up and do something immediately. And um, thank goodness, uh, Dr. Glover called us all together and we started from that, that we were there, would be there um, to let our, lend our voices, not only to his murder, but to the other injustices that are going on with black women. Um, we talked about police reform. We talked about poverty, healthcare, COVID. We and, uh, had a virtual news conference where mm -hmm. we covered all of those things and all 13 of us were present and lift our voices up 
made our opinions known, like we know how to do, and um, made made it so that everyone would know. And and when we, of course, we signed the letter mm -hmm. um, to Governor Kemp to let him know that we were not having what he was trying to do to the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, no to that. Um, we have, uh, of course, sent the letter to, as um, Sister Kimberly was saying earlier, sent the letter to um, Senator Harris because we just wanted her to know because, well, she came to Black Women's Agenda, we gave her an award, mm -hmm. um, at the President's mm -hmm. Award. I just have to put that in. And, uh, when she was there, she she was talking to um, Simone um, Askew, who was the first cadet to lead at West. Yes, yes. And she said to her, "Whenever you walk into a room, we walk with you." Mm. Know that. And so that's just sort of stuck with us. And mm -hmm. so we wanted to let her know whatever room she walks into, whatever rally, whatever campaign, that we are behind her yeah. and that we wanted her to know that. And because she was saying, standing on the weight of all of shoulders for the people who walked before her, mm -hmm. but now we're gonna be standing on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. So we just feel that that's something that we needed to let her know that we are there, that you know she's the dream of our all of our ancestors. Right, and we're proud. right. I got goosebumps, President Smith. <laughs> 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 Just in terms of, of, of that moment and, and, and visualizing it as 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 uh, Ms. Hess has said um, and, and it has described this. That's a really powerful moment, and and I suspect that uh, that wasn't the first uh, powerful moment that Sisters United for Reform, President Smith, have had, or the last. No, oh, no. Yeah. no, 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 not at all. Not at all. We not all have all. too much to say. It, exactly, <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, in, the, in the letter that you all wrote, could you share anything um, uh, more in terms of putting that, crafting that letter? Um, as you all uh, did to put this together, it, it can't be easy uh, putting all of that and, and, and that strength and, and power into one letter, but you did it beautifully. Well, I think it, um, you know, the intent, because we knew this was coming, as Sister Kimberly mm -hmm. said, we, we knew that moment was coming. We were going to have to say something strong. Uh, we decided to make it an open letter because the, the intent was not only to strengthen her, but considering the environment we live in and the world we are now, the part of the intent was to make sure we strengthen all black women mm -hmm. uh, and all women. The issues that we face in terms of this angry black woman thing, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the monster epithet that he called. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want and we've heard feedback. I've had feedback since then from source and other women saying, you know, it reminded me how proud I need to be of myself and our own heritage. Um, and we tried in the letter to, to put in there, and we did, because historians and archivists confirm it. And we said, mm -hmm. the African woman is the mother of modern civilization. For centuries, Black women have nursed and raised the babies of others along with their own babies, caring mm -hmm. for them, encouraging them, feeding them wonderful, soulful food, using our strength to release and free others, crying for too many lost children as black women who have, it was a black woman who was a human computer that secured a man got to the moon. It was a black woman who strength of her will would not be moved off her seat from a city bus and started a movement. It was a brave black woman who took her folding chair when she could not get a seat at the political table as the first woman to run for president of the United States. And it's a black woman who has raised powerful children and become political activists themselves when the men of the movement were murdered. I, I think that point and to tell all of our women, use your skills and experience to be evident and never let you be devalued in your mm -hmm. assets because that's a concern. Let the power of your voice be heard and never be minimized or silenced because too many times we are. Let your presence be awesome and never fragrant. flagrant. Let your integrity be steadfast and never compromised. Let your intelligence be respected and never denied, and let your light continue to shine and never be dimmed by demagoguery, divisiveness, or delusion. You know, we've got our backs, but we have to have each other's back. Absolutely. That statement and those statements really speak to all of us as well as her. 
And yeah. if we could do an open letter that spoke to our women in general to try and help them understand, regardless of their status in life and where they are, right. that they, in fact, make a difference and can make a difference, but do not allow yourself to be devalued, then that matters to all of us. And hopefully it mattered to Kamala as well. Oh, my gosh. Okay, mm -hmm. now you've got, you've taken it from And if I can uh, We want to add one more thing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was yeah. just going to say, uh, if I can add to that, it's the whole essence of putting us in the mindset that we are one. Mm -hmm. I am you and you are me. And whatever affects me is going to affect you. That's right. And we wanted Senator Harris to know that she's not in this thing by herself. And whatever mm -hmm. she goes through, we're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very accomplished women, but you know how it is. We have to have that little extra um, incentive and someone on our shoulder saying, you can make it. No worries, you can make mm -hmm. it. So we see ourselves as one. That's right. Thank you. And I was gonna, I was gonna quickly add that we're here to help her fight her battles and that we're gonna shut down things that come up. For example, mm -hmm. when the, the, the ambitious statement was made, we leaped on that and said, no, you can't talk about ambition as being a negative. We we instill ambition into each mm -hmm. other. That's what we tell students. You we we work by ambition. We walk by ambition. Mm -hmm. So when we see an ambitious woman, we don't, we don't talk about we don't think about the dog whistles that you all are trying to talk about. But we know we've done our jobs. We see an ambitious black ambitious black woman. And then the other thing is we try to think about that birther movement. Remember that when mm -hmm. tried to bring mm -hmm. that up? we quickly shut that down. We jumped on the airways. I was in the New York Times and Wall Street Journal on the radio. We were, we were talking. We got on the waves and we shut that down. We said, listen, does one parent have to be an American? Two or what? Tell me, because his mother uh, is from somewhere, Scotland or somewhere. <laughs> you know, <she's> <laughs> right. so, so we jumped all over that. So we're here to help her fight her battles. Yeah. So when they, mm -hmm. so we can't do it all by herself. And sometimes she wouldn't even have a chance to call on us. We'll be right. listening mm -hmm. and know when we need to jump in and help. Right. Yeah, and that, that's what sisters do. That's right. <laughs> and, and Yolanda and I are sitting here right here going, that's right. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and so but that's what's so important about this collective, because, you know, what what the what people have tried to do historically is, is tear us apart. And, and, exactly. and, and make us look like we're in conflict with each other. And that's right. really the power of this Sisters United for Reform Coalition. Mm -hmm. We have 13 organizations. Some of our organizations are very different. Some have different areas of focus. But what we wanted to do after being when, when, when uh, Sister Glove convened us, we wanted to come together and say, whatever this is you're trying to say about Black women, this is what we are. Five million strong around all of these issues that impact our community. And now our sister is here. We got her back. She don't mm -hmm. even have to worry about it mm -hmm. because yeah. she could be any one of us. And these are the things that we all deal with as mm -hmm. we move through life. And we yeah. have to show that we have to be together regardless. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, yeah. Ms. Gaines Clark, I know that you um, are, are, are amening this as the rest of us are. <laughs> and, and, and is there anything that um, the folks that are listening today that we may have not discussed immediately in the opening of this uh, discussion uh, that you want people to know about uh, Sisters United for Reform, um, as well as uh, members who may not know too much uh, of this organization? One very key thing is that uh, we come from all walks of life, and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Um, and our, either if we're in the Greek organization or the Black Women's Agenda or a, a friendship organization, we have a common goal. Yeah. And also, we have resilience. Just because there's one letter, we're going to have something behind it. Mm. We didn't come together just to have a very a glossy graphic. We're about doing something. We're mm -hmm. very, very focused. And the other thing is we know how to re-energize because even when the 13 of us get together just to hash out the issues, it is something that Sister Beverly may say or Sister Kim or Sister 
Linda or Sister Guinevere say that inspires me. And then I take it back to my organization. And um, this historically, this is not new, but because of this current times that we're in, we said we're going to be front and center. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. We're here. And as if I know my mother would be totally mad at me, but we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, a lot of our mamas are shaking their heads right now. No is right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let me ask you, ladies, and, and anyone who of you who would like to respond to this, and we uh, and just to remind folks uh, to to uh, reset here, um, we are talking to members of uh, the heads of their organizations, and and all thirteen member organizations are a part of Sisters United for Reform, uh, having a four-part discussion this month of October. Last week we spoke. Uh, this week we're talking about the power of the sisterhood. We will be back next Tuesday and then the Tuesday before uh, the end of our election period. So the month of October is, is really celebrating the power of the sisterhood with these wonderful women. Um, Something that struck me, and it, it was surprising that some people got it and other people did not. And that was how angry I was when um, the uh, man in the White House called Kamala Harris a monster. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it shook me to my very core, and, and not because he has that kind of power, but because of just words that he chooses, mm -hmm. and especially against black women. Mm -hmm. He will demean all women, but there's something about the power of that black woman that really gets to him, mm -hmm. as we have seen in his discussions and, and, and characterizations of other black women. Um, did anyone else uh, have that uh, kind of visceral feeling uh, that, that I did after uh, he said that? Absolutely. I mean, it shook my core. And um, I'm a mother of millennial children, so they mm -hmm. always tell me, watch all of the news. Mm -hmm. Don't stick with one so you can see how others are thinking. Mm -hmm. I was appalled that they were explaining the disrespect of Senator Harris' look. Now, we all know what that look means. Mm -hmm. When our mother or our grandmother mm -hmm. turn around, she's waiting <laughs> for you to stop. She knows you're lying, and mm -hmm. she wants you to know that you're lying. And culturally, we know that. Mm -hmm. But on another station, they were bashing her for that look and being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if there was any type of poll and was asked, everybody in the African-American community would know what that look was. That's right. And so we're mm -hmm. always defending. And I think at this point, um, we have accepted that this is going to happen. That's why we were being on the offense versus the defense. Mm -hmm. But to understand and get it through that you think I'm too aggressive is not my problem. That's mm -hmm. your problem. Mm -hmm. And but I think as African-Americans see that uh, more and more, they can hold their head up high and have that ambition, have that expectation that I belong here. Yeah. This is my time. This is my seat. I guess my reaction was a little different because, you know, that letter was written before that debate. Mm -hmm. My expectation was that that's what he was going to do, because I mm -hmm. do believe, I mean, I shouldn't say this on the air, but. You know, that some people, black women scare some people, okay? Yes. They scare them. And, <laughs> and when we speak up, they don't know what to say, so they just come out with nonsense. Because <laughs> there's nothing else to come to mind. She, she's, I can't say intelligent. I can't say she got to my next nerve. Okay, so she's a monster. You know, and I go, you know, man, please. I mean, that's, right. <laughs> that's kind of where yeah. I come from when I hear that. Lovely. And I just got... You, you you can, as we can see through things, you can mm -hmm. see through that. It exactly. is it is so demeaning, it's ridiculous to the point where I just say, okay, try one more time because you didn't get me that. Just keep coming at it. Exactly. Keep coming at it. It's not okay. going to work. Yeah, it, it, work. I mean, it's to me a sign of ignorance because mm -hmm. 
The only thing you can say about her is she's a monster. I mean, she's lovely. And this yes. is what the only thing that you can think of to let come out of your mouth because, she, yeah, she looked at him like, have you lost your mind? <laughs> yeah. And actually, I have to confess, I was texting with, with some of my BWA sisters and, and, uh, of course, Kim is is one of our BWA sisters, and I'm saying, why isn't she going through that plexiglass? You know, because that's the way I. I feel she was very restrained by just Open the look. So, <laughs> so she was raised. Yeah, right. yeah that's exactly. right. <laughs> it was, so, you know, so she's a lady, and she is a lady, and so gracious. And uh, because it's hard to keep a straight face yes. yeah. when uh, there's an expression that I won't say on the air, but when somebody's doing something in your face and telling you it's rain, uh, <laughs> uh, that was what he was doing because he was just lying the entire yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. Uh, and I think what's important is that she showed that she was qualified. Absolutely. Her, 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 her yeah. performance gave her a platform. Mm -hmm. They showed the type of education she had. It showed everything, mm -hmm. and the world saw her, saw her. I mean, they saw her doing the campaign trail. But this is another opportunity to to know this Senator Kamala Harris that some of us have met and have already come to know. And so it was a proud moment. She was so prepared, so prepared. She was so professional, so poised. And just a yeah. man at that stage. And I think all he had to do was resort to below the lines of a monster. So we know what monsters mean. Yeah. <laughs> dog whistle, you know, for evil, right. mad woman. So we know the dog whistle. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and then they go to the communists. I mean, it was just, to me, it was just an act of desperation. And so, it was. We, so and, it was and, and I think, Sybil, that's why we were ready, because we knew that when this intelligent, um, mm -hmm. um, prepared Black woman got mm -hmm. on this stage, I think we were very, we were very deliberate, because as, as yeah. Sister yes. Beverly said, this letter was ready. Mm -hmm. um we we before the debate so we knew what was going to happen because we know what mm -hmm. they do to black women and we knew that this this this, right. this 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 particular black woman this uh one somebody you know this intelligent prepared we knew what she yeah. was going to bring to that debate and mm -hmm. we knew that after she brought that to that debate they were going to come for her after that because that's, and that's all they had ever could say yeah the same and thing was done to michelle obama I mean, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. absolutely constant and never stopped and you the know the playbook is the same and mm -hmm. we didn't and we did not we we didn't mention that this is a sitting united states senator senator yeah absolutely right. Exactly. Right. This sitting senator deserves the respect of if That's by right. nobody else the president of the mm -hmm. united states That's, That's why right. it's so horrific that you had somebody in that seat of power yeah. who had the audacity to bring down a senator, now That's a right. woman, and then the black woman senator. That's right. It was, mm -hmm. just, it was but it, it wasn't unexpected. It was, right. just, it was just so unfortunate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You always hope it's yeah. that little sliver, that little window that maybe, oh, they're going to surprise us this time. But yeah, no. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. God bless you for thinking that, um, Madam President. <laughs> the, the, the playbook, playbook doesn't change. The playbook doesn't the playbook change. Playbook does not show, change. When Absolutely. they show you who they are, you believe them. And, and we did. We believe it. That's, that's right. right. That's, right. that's right. And that's some right. things even black women can't fix. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, madam, we're going to fix this. It shall be fixed in 21 days. Yes, ma'am. Right. If yes, you want this fixed, yeah. you need to go vote. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, we're trying yes. to write. And, yes. and uh, but, you know, them. some people will say the same even after we fix it. So that's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely oh, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and and as far as the women who are listening to us and watching us today, um, it, it, and and can you talk more about some of the activities, perhaps, or the words of inspiration, but also activities that perhaps you all are thinking about, talking about in in these times when we really need the uh, the inspiration and the support of organizations such as yours. And well, any of you can speak to this. 
Well, I know in uh, my organization, we put together a uh, COVID-19 seminar Mm -hmm. because we're getting so much misinformation. And the panelists of that are members uh, of our organization who are doctors who are on the front line. So they're telling us about vaccination, about testing, about underlying conditions and what that means for African-American women. Mm -hmm. Also, the disparity in the Black community. And we also talked about mental health. Yes. I know sometimes in our community that's something that's really laid low, but we spent time, and one of the members of the panelists is a psychiatrist, and she's also a member, to look at some of those signs Mm -hmm. of, of depression and what you can do and where you can reach out, whether you're at home alone or you're with two dogs, Mm -hmm. a husband and two kids, that you need to have that space for yourself. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, we have turned our world upside down because we're normally being engaging, but everything that we do is inside, you know, our our office or in our living room and just allowing ourselves to love on each other. And so Mm -hmm. we just found that having that COVID-19 awareness uh, seminar from our members who are on the front line was just so, uh, so remarkable and so soothing for our organization. Mm -hmm. That's so important, isn't it? We yes. did something very similar uh, to Sister Gaines. We we put in place a COVID-19 task force that really mm-hmm. helped to guide our operations and bring awareness to some of those things. Uh, as Sister Margaret said, you know, it's very interesting that uh, Saturday was World Mental Health Day. And, mm-hmm. and what this pandemic has done, it has really shed a light on, mm-hmm. on really all of these disparities and all of these inequities. Um, you know, I, I know that our sisters on the panel say when when, when they get a, a cold, we get the flu. And right. so everything is exacerbated. And when you right. put people in quarantine and isolation and have um, folks who, you know, can't get, can't work because we've shut down and their jobs are dependent upon them going to work and children who have to go to school virtually and they may not necessarily have um, the, you um, technology that they mm-hmm. need. I mean, it's just so many things. You talk about domestic violence. That's one of the issues that we are addressing in, in Sisters United for Reform. Mm-hmm. But everything is exacerbated. Everything is amplified. And it really brings to light how needed our organizations are so we can really get into the community and support those 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 issues that have come up, but also supporting ourselves because we too, we, we, we all are, are traumatized by mm-hmm where we are not only in the pandemic and the quarantine, but the social justice issues, and then the the behavior we see from our leaders because we didn't have to be here. Right. right. We absolutely, absolutely didn't have to be here. And That's so, right. you know, we all have to take a step back and say, we're all in pain. We're all struggling. We're all mm-hmm. trying to right. deal mm-hmm. with what COVID has brought to light. And so, mm-hmm. you know, as an organization, we've done things within our organization to have um, webinars to bring some mm-hmm. of these things to uh, to our members and then take things to the community so we can have our hands uh, not only in the communities but supporting ourselves. Absolutely. And, and without an Alpha Kappa Alpha, we have something both internally and externally. So externally, we have what's called AK Assist. So we try to assist those who are really having some issues, the homeless, and well, there's quite a bit of us having issues, but you know, we do things externally. Internally, we've, we've established uh, the pandemic task force to keep the membership abreast of what's going on, but also the, the best practices, the do's and don'ts. You know what? This is, this is a very sensitive election. We know they're mm-hmm. going to come after us with everything. You can't do this. You can't wear paraphernalia and get in a group and have Biden, Harris, you know, so we right. can't appear to be an endorsement. Um, and we, we, we have what's called disaster relief fund to just assist mm. the, the sorority members who are hurting, who, who've done some things that was more related to acts of nature, you know, the tornadoes and hurricanes, but, but we also look at the COVID relief also. And so we, we, we've lowered the dues in some instances and just, just to do what we can to support and help the sorority members. Cause we all have to get through this and we've made got PPE available and testing is available. We're just trying to see whatever we can to get to get us through this. We have to all live through this. The first objective is to live through it. 
That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And then from there to live at a quality, a quality life level. And so, so internally and externally, we're just doing separate things just to assist. And as you all know, the big thing we did, you know, we just helping students. You know, yes. I was back to students. That's who I oh, am. Yeah. You know, helping the students as they try to get, they need emergency relief funds. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have our annual project is to, to raise $1 million in one day. So it's the third year in a row, $1 million in one day for HBCUs. We know that's, oh. who, that's who's helping. That's who we have to go and help them and, and give money directly to HBCUs. We do 65 HBCUs that have gotten funds so far, mm-hmm. uh, 50000 to $100,000. So it's, it's been almost, I think it's been three million, over three million dollars so far, three and wow. a half. But we're now looking at doing the rest of it. So that's this is how you help in a time of need, mm-hmm. a time of crisis. It tells who we are, defines us. Because if everybody's living well, you know, you know, you're doing all right. But when, right. when trouble comes, the storm begins to rise. That's mm-hmm. when you can hold on mm-hmm. and learn to stretch out and love on each other more. Mm-hmm. That's right. And especially a time like this, you know, I was thinking today I was I ran out to get something to eat and um, had my mask on. And uh, you, you lose that connection with people, even with something where you're trying to save people's lives, exactly. including your own. Um, mm-hmm. And it really is extraordinary just by, you know. I'm not a winker, but I've learned to wink um, so <laughs> just to let people know that it's okay. And, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm friendly. This mask may not appear, you know, or my sunglasses, take my sunglasses off you know, or whatever, but it really is important. And, and members of your organization were on with us last week and we talked about the issues of Domestic Abuse Awareness Month, yeah. as well as uh, mental health. And you all are doing that each in your own respective organizations, but also so as Sisters United for Reform, doing that. And it's so vitally important to keep these topics front of mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that the Black Women's Agenda did was we sent a letter uh, with our collaborating organizations, and all of them are. Uh, all the the uh, Sisters for United Reform is, is are part of that group. Mm-hmm. Um, to talk about the first 100 days mm-hmm. of next administration and we talked about COVID taught us what we already knew Mm. and we're already aware of um, the disparities as far as health is concerned right and that we wanted to bring those to bear and so to have a program set up starting the first 100 days of the next administration so that we could deal with the health, physical and mental health of, mm-hmm. um, of, of, of our population. Because, you know, everybody is talking about what's going to happen on day one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once we get into, you know, uh, the, the, the Biden team has said once day one, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And we talk about the first 100 days for other administrations, but this is unlike anything we've ever been through, obviously, mm-hmm. but you're absolutely right, <laughs> Madam President, about really looking, and and I talked about this today and I was talking to D.L. Hughley, you really have to play a game of chess here. Mm -hmm. You you Mm -hmm. have to be very forward thinking uh, and and give people the opportunity to take a breath, but also keep playing that game because Mm -hmm. it's so, because next thing you know, we'll be looking around going, how the heck do we get here? And without, you know, being very forward thinking and planning ahead which is something that mm-hmm. we needed leadership for. It was supposed to be, uh, it was written a new affair deal because even if, with the new deal, it wasn't for black women, right. black people. But we have to look now, you know, we're going to go out and vote and bec- and whoever we vote for, we expect something for exactly. it. Yes. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just not a blank slate. That's exactly. right. And I'm glad you said that because what we don't know many times we don't stre- we don't stress we said freedom and equality. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. You can be free and still be unequal. Right. So we're, right. we're looking for freedom and equality. That's the buzzword. Now we have to be equal. So we're not set up when you know we're not trying to take it over. We're not going to sell <laughs> anything less. And, I'm not. I'm not mad at wanting to take it over, matter. <laughs> and you know, as we uh, look at COVID, one of the things that COVID has done, 14. it has taken that bandage off mm. 
mm-hmm. and expose mm-hmm. the wounds mm-hmm. yeah. that mm-hmm. never healed. Yeah, right. Yeah, the inequity yeah. of police reform, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, social injustice, uh, the healthcare system. I mean, we've been trotting along and making some um, inroads, but I think COVID was that thing that just ripped the Band-Aid off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and on top of that, we were forced to deal with it yeah. because it's very easy to turn off your television and mm-hmm. go to your office, fly to your next yeah. meeting. Yeah. But we were a captive audience. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it makes that expectation that Sister Guinevere was talking about on that 100 days, you know, we had time to think about this and, and, and we have our own internal systems that we're going to do uh, checks on and balances on that. And you know, um, thing, go ahead. I was going to say the thing that con- concerns me is because that, that next hundred days is so important because there is so much to overcome. Yes. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I think it would be easy to get caught up in, we are in such a down spiral in terms of what it takes to overcome it. We're going to actually need more strength and more motivation yes. and mm-hmm. more strategy than we have before mm-hmm. that election, regardless mm-hmm. of who wins. Because mm-hmm. once the administration gets in there, that's when our work really starts. Exactly. In terms of, it really is a matter of starting over again. Okay, so here we are. What have we planned ahead are going to be our expectations right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the depression that people are going to go through, this racism thing yes. after the election mm-hmm. is liable to oh get my worse. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Because the anger that's out there, and we yeah. have to be ready oh, yeah. to deal with that anger by making sure that we are strong in terms Absolutely. of being anchored in what the expectation is, be ready to meet it. However, we present ourselves that's when right. we move to that next hundred days as leaders of organizations is going to be the way our organizations and other black women present themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to make sure we put on the face that, Hey, we're in this together. We're going to do this together. This is going to be a tough road to hoe until we really get moving forward. But here is the plan. Here's our strategy of the things we're going to do to make sure that we can move forward. We know that depression will still be there. How do we mm-hmm. help get out of it? Mm-hmm. Those people who have maybe been in those relationships and now want to get out of relationships. Mm-hmm. What do we do in terms of our mm-hmm. training and the webinars and so on that we all do to prepare them for that? Our children may try to get back to school. What happened before they were there and how do we make sure we know that our kids are going to be behind an awful lot of them? What have we done mm-hmm. to prepare to make sure we do things to help them catch up? Absolutely. The kinds yeah. of strategies and approach we need to have to prepare for the downward before the upward spiral that happens once this election happens is something we got to make sure we are girded for and ready for yeah. as we go forward. Mm-hmm. So, but Ooh. that's why this 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 one hundred day plan was so critical, and because mm-hmm. it goes back to this this uh, show that you have is the power of the sisterhood. And so, yes. it wasn't BWA that sent that letter. It wasn't Delta Sigma Theta mm-hmm. or Alpha Kappa Alpha, the girlfriend of the links. It was us. It was right. all yeah. of us. This right. is this whether what regardless of what we're doing in our respective organizations. This is what our community needs. This is what Black women need. This is what we demand of you supporting you. And this is what we expect to see in the first 100 days. Right. And, yeah. and five minutes strong. Yeah, we can't go back to who we were because we'll never right. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, 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 it yeah. has changed. Let's come back. I guess I'm going to bring up something that's, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Glover. No, no, let's come back and just magnify this what we said earlier that COVID really magnified the challenges that we were already facing. It brought yeah. out the discrimination, mm-hmm. the effects of discrimination. And I've said it many times before that it's it, the COVID has a more, it, we said, it's been said that COVID has a more detrimental effect on African Americans. Mm-hmm. And let me give my, my, my thinking on that. It's not because we're necessarily more susceptible with high blood pressure or diabetes or respiratory challenges, but it's because of years of discrimination in our healthcare system, years of unfair treatment when it comes to healthcare. We had governors who would not accept funding because they were a red state. And that's kind uh-huh. of what we have in America. Uh-huh. So, right. so under that's COVID, right. you know, all these things that well, you would not you would not be fair to African Americans under COVID is coming home to arrest. And uh-huh. the same with the roots. And it's coming the same with education. There's unequal funding for HBCUs, unfair allocation formulas. So COVID has pulled this war back, like the Wizard of Oz. You pull that curtain back, and you can see. Mm-hmm. What's back. <laughs> so what can we do? You know, we to be we support each other. What we're doing now, we're supporting each other. The sororities, mm-hmm. the groups, the hour thirteen plus the others 
can support each other more. You know, I mm-hmm. love how we have come together for a common cause to uplift black women, to yeah. be there for one another, you know, the peer, the mentors, the advocates for each other. We're yeah. providing advice. There's research and we respond to issues. We yeah. share resources when necessary. Somebody called me and said, can you get somebody to research this, this particular issue? I said, sure. So we called a graduate student. They got the answer them just like that. So the <laughs> mission of this, no, I wasn't going to do it. The mission of this. <laughs> 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 now the truth comes out. <laughs> empower the women in our sisterhood. So that's what we're all about. Just Absolutely. Empowerment. Impact and empowerment. Yeah, I, I am. I am sister, hear me roar. I really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so jazzed by this. Um, and we are coming to the close and, and I think you all have, have left us uh, with such uh, an uplifted spirit and, and, and given us our marching orders in a lot of respects. I feel regenerated just in having this conversation with you all and I'm very grateful. I'm so grateful that you all have uh, come aboard today and, and, and we've been able to have a, a, a short uh, just insight into the conversation as well as to look forward, as we've been saying. And um, I want to uh, also encourage folks to come back and join us next week uh, as we talk police reform and combating systemic racism, something that was a big part of the conversation at the uh, uh, Supreme Court nominee hearing today Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and not getting it by the way, Um, (laughs) as well as voter mobilization, education and engagement. And that will be our final Wednesday. Uh, And we'll we'll have you back, uh, 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 President Clark, uh, Gaines Clark, to talk about that as well. Um, Ladies, have we left anything uh, unsaid that you all would like to leave us with? The the thing that I want to make sure that your viewers understand that our organization the 13 illustrious organization that makes the uh, United Sisters for Reform is a collective, extraordinary group of women Mm -hmm. who have the will, the desire, and more importantly, the courage to keep pushing forward in spite of, and I'm gonna leave in spite of blank, you can put whatever (laughs) you wanna put in there, in spite of COVID, in spite of voter suppression, uh, in spite of social injustice. This is a phenomenal group of women and I am so proud that I'm a part of this lovely group. Wow. Mm. Once again, you're leaving me for Clint. Okay, um, and and I'm not, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, um, Tuesdays are my most difficult days. Uh, I get up, uh, I try to go to bed early, but I, I don't sleep well because I have to do an early radio hit on Tuesday mornings with Erica Campbell. Um, today we were trying to get everything done in advance of this. We were, we were trying to get to a Biden event and that didn't work out. I had DL Hughley and, and so it's just been a long day. And, but I'm telling you, this has rejuvenated me and, um, conversations with you, Dr. Glover and you, President Smith and, and, and others and, and, and talking about it because we're in a really difficult spot here. Um, with the What You Need to Know newsletter. And I'm so very grateful that you all have come here and been a part of this. And I feel as though I'm a part of the sisterhood um, because you all have just really supported us uh, in so many ways and just your words and, 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 um, and offer of support. And so I am very, very, very humbly thankful um, for your time and your attention and your participation here. Um, we have uh, an, an almost uh, incredible number, thousands of, of women that are watching us here today. Right. And um, that is powerful. Uh, and, and some brothers too. We want to thank the brothers <laughs> for watching. Some brothers. We got some good brothers, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Sybil, if we could just say anything, just what you said about us being on, on your show, we are our sister's keeper. And I yeah. think that's what we want to make sure that we convey, Absolutely. however that looks, as President Margaret said, we are here for each other. We're here for that's you. Right. That's right. right. I, and we're we, grateful to be here as well. And we, and, so we stand, and we stand together as united women leaders, Black women leaders with our collective memberships. And we invite all of you to join us as we fight the racism, the bigotry, discrimination, as we assist and protect Senator Harris, we'll show what she's gonna need in the coming days, in the next 21 days. And, so, and we're fighting to save the lives 
of our black women and men mm -hmm. and children. So mm -hmm. that's our parting words. That's our mission to uplift black women and to make sure that we help in saving the lives and the quality of life for others around us. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that says it all, President Glover. And um, I would uh, like to close by asking folks to please uh, continue to support us here on the What You Need to Know newsletter. It is a free newsletter. It's free. Doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, but we uh, are a group of four black women and one brother uh, who are uh, putting this together every day, Monday through Friday. And so we ask that you please go to civilwilks.com, subscribe to our free newsletter letter. Uh, get your family signed, friends signed up, your sisters, your brothers, your aunties and them uh, to all <laughs> sign up and be a part of our What You Need to Know news team. And also uh, thank you for joining us here on YouTube and Facebook. And um, one more thing. <laughs> as as my sister here and my 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 best friend said, that's what sisters do. Yes, absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. Uh, and one more thing. Um, this is from somebody. What's her name? Ford. Uh, Clarita Ford. Uh, asking me, and my doctor Sherman Scruggs's granddaughter. Yeah, yeah, that was my granddad, <laughs> president at Lincoln University, and oh, she says God. that. Um, my mom and uh, Sherlita were uh, together. Uh, uh, they went over as AKAs together. Uh, they're at Lincoln, I guess. So that's very nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so that is, uh, that's very nice. I appreciate uh, your uh, asking about that and asking about my granddad and my mom. So thank you all very much. I hope that this won't be our last opportunity to talk and um, just know that I am immensely grateful uh, to your participation you. and your support. Thank I thank you, you all very much. You got this. Thank you, Sybil. Thank you. We're here for you. We're here for you. Sign up for the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we are here for you, whatever uh, we can uh, lend uh, a helping hand and get the word out for the things that you all are doing as well. We are, uh, it, it is a symbiotic relationship here. And just know that we are here for you, and that's what sisters do. Thank you all so much. Um, please join us next Wednesday, uh, next Tuesday, I'm sorry, uh, as we continue our salute and, and talk to Sisters United for reform. And as I said, that is going to be talking about police reform and combating systemic racism. And uh, can I just have that one more time? Because I want to uh, indicate who's going to be with us. Dr. Janetta Cole, of course, of the National uh, Council of Negro Women, Cornisha McGill-Brown, the National President of Jack and Jill of America, and Valerie Hollingsworth-Baker, the uh, International President of Zeta Phi Beta Incorporated. Ladies, thank you so much, each and every thank one you. of you. Thanks thank for watching. You. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see bye you all. Bye. Bye. Oh, yes. Vote. 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 Please.